Sounds Like Rain, and it's R-E-I-E-N. That's right. Like raining from heaven. Yes. And they have a YouTube channel. It's in the description below. Be sure to check it out. Their music is great. I grew up on Appalachian music. Mom played the dulcimer. Uh -huh. Loved it. So that's kind of how I really got into you guys after I found you. So today we are doing a tour of their tiny house. They have you and your wife. Yes. And four kids and one on the way. Right. So four and a half kids are living in this tiny house and I am impressed. <laughs> you took me on a tour beforehand and I really like it. You know, um, we've been kind of looking into tiny houses for our teenagers as if we buy another house, putting them in the backyard uh -huh. because a one bedroom apartment in Colorado was $1,200. Oh my. And I thought, well, they could have their own apartment and then we could do Airbnb later. Uh -huh. um, and so we've been kind of touring a few tiny houses on our trip back here as we're looking for places. So if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about your house. This is not a traditional house, actually. It looks like one, but it's right. not. So this is a 14 by 40 shed uh, that came as an empty shell uh, with the windows installed. Actually, we have a local shed builder who put them just where we wanted them. And then we finished out the interior ourselves. Um, and uh, we're living in it sort of as a rental on rented land, um, but uh, we customize it to our to our needs. So what? So you're so you rent your land then? Yes. Is that how you told us in your other video? But right. tell us again in case they didn't see your other video, which go check in the description below. But how is your arrangement here? Because you told us in the other video you have no house payment. That's right. So yeah, we. Um, over the years have learned how to um, just connect in our community by work trading with people who need help on their property. So currently we live on six acres with an older lady and she needs help. She's um, running it as a little bit of a retreat center um, and she needed a caretaker. So we work in exchange for this custom built house. It's pretty much perfect. Wow, it's, a win, is... it's a win, win, win. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> okay, so this is your porch area to mm -hmm. your front porch and, it, and it's huge mm -hmm. so the boys do they play out here in the summer then mostly all the time okay yeah this is this is their bike runway they go back and forth uh i don't know what we would do without it yeah this is actually really smart idea especially with little kids mm -hmm. and it's it's got a deck but it's protective and and i think it's really um set up i always want an old school for the kids to run it up and down the hallways. Right. I thought that would be so cool, yeah, but this yeah. is kind of a similar concept. Yep, so, yep. Okay, let's go inside Come on and in. see. Is my camera. Yeah. It's so quiet in here, too. Isn't it quiet? <laughs> Once you step in, it's yeah, like vacuum. Wow, it's nice. I've done it a couple of times. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Got all the good angles. Okay, so we are standing in your living room. Sort it's of. our everything room. Your everything it's our room. living room, our dining room, our playroom, our music studio. We tried to keep as much of the interior space open by not creating a whole lot of little rooms in the house. So yeah. the living room flows into the kitchen. Obviously, we have a door on our bathroom. Um, and then down beyond, there's a laundry room. And then directly behind us here, there are uh, sort of stacked bedrooms, which I'll okay. show you in a moment. Okay. All right, let's start. Let's work from one end of the outhouse to the other, I okay. guess. If that will, is that an easy way to do it? Sure, or? yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll switch you guys' spots. Da -da -da -da. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> so typically in a, in a shed home, uh, you would have like a lofted area. And with kids, we didn't want them climbing up a ladder into a loft above like our bedroom. So we flipped that upside down. And we have a short staircase that goes to our bedroom, which is lofted. And then the kids have like an under loft. So we call it a reverse loft. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you call it? The master bedroom. <laughs> uh, we have a bed and we have a room and that's pretty <laughs> much all we need. We also have a, an area just above the entry hallway where we stack our clothing and things. Currently the baby stays in here, although he'll move down uh, when the new one comes. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the bedroom. Okay, so this is the man cave. We have four boys, so that's another thing for us that, you know, helps because if we had mixed genders, we might have to have more bedrooms and have a larger house. But for us, with having four boys, they sleep down here. Uh, this is actually our bed is directly above, and that area where I was standing previously is to my right. 
Um, and then right in here we have just a couple of toys and books and clothes. And that's about it. Oh, cool. So now we're in your living room. Yes. Which is about two feet from your bedroom. Yes, it's all the same space. Um, we just have minimal furniture and minimal stuff. Um, we do spend a lot of time in this space. I custom built this toy table uh, with Legos and things for the boys. Um, we also record music in here from time to time. We did a whole album, mm -hmm. uh, which was which was neat. Um, this is where we do life. Okay, so then we're walking another six inches. <laughs> And there's your dining room. Yeah, so the dining room is also our homeschool area. Um, <clears throat> the table extends. We have a couple of leaves for it just to make more space. Um, but otherwise, we eat here and we study here. Uh, Lindsay does her sewing here. Um, and other, this is a, a heavily, heavily used area for the boys. So what do you guys use for heat, electric, water, and sewer? Okay, so we're on a septic. Okay. Uh, we have well water, and all those were here on the property before we okay. set the shed down. Um, and for for heat, we use a wood stove, which is actually outside right now. We pull it out during the summer just to have a little bit more space. And then uh, we use ceiling fans for air. Cool. Yep. Good. And I noticed you have a whole house fan up there. We do, yep. So we um, actually intentionally put the shed in the shade, and then during the hottest part of the year... Obviously the heat rises and then we just suck all the hot air out on the end. My That is one of my favorite things ever. Yeah. We don't have one at this house in Colorado and I regret not putting it in because it really makes a huge difference, oh, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People don't talk about whole house fans a lot and it's really, it just really changes the whole <laughs> feel of the house. it's cheaper than air conditioning. So. It's a lot cheaper, yeah. yeah. So normally your wood stove sits right here yes. by the door. And how far does it stick out into your into the room? Um, well, to have all the safe clearances, I mean, it comes out uh, a good deal here. Okay. And that's one of the main... It takes up most of this space right here okay. uh, during the winter time. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's wood heat that I can split by hand. It doesn't cost us anything other than my labor. And, yeah. That's my favorite way to heat. It mm -hmm. just feels warmer to me. Yeah, it's also but. dry. One thing that I uh, that we learned living in a small space is that like we used to use propane heat and other forms of heat that actually create condensation and mildew and things. So wood heat just dries the whole place out. Oh, oh. that's nice, especially yeah. in a humid climate like this. Right. Where that would really be helpful. Do you have a problem with the kids in the wood stove? No, we we have a we put a cinder block barrier around it to also trap the heat, create a bit of a heat sink, and then. If needed, we can put a, a metal cage around the front. Good. Okay. So now we're in Lindsay's kitchen, and this is actually a really convenient kitchen. I've been looking at a lot of houses, and everything is so far spread out mm -hmm. that I think it would be so much work just to go to the refrigerator. <laughs> but I really like the fact that your refrigerator and your stove and your sink are all really close in together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of so, so you have a gas stove? Yeah. So that's propane. Uh -huh. Okay. Propane, yep. Do you have like a garbage disposal? No, we don't have that. We we compost everything and okay. we'll give it to our chickens. Okay. And then I just try to, yeah. So we don't have any food waste that we're throwing away. Okay. Um. Yeah. So just... you use it all for the chickens, and mm -hmm. then the chickens give you eggs, and it's a great big yeah. That works out great. <laughs> or compost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's... Do you have a dish? For... You don't have no a dish dishwasher. Washer. No. So you wash dishes by hand. We do. Yeah. Okay. Do you like doing that? Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, yes, I like to can. I haven't done much yet this season, but I'm hoping uh, soon to do some mm -hmm. canning. Yeah. Do you freeze? Uh-huh. I tr Well, yeah, we have a deep freeze. It's a smaller one, but um, if we get a lot of something, then I can put it in there. Okay. So, yeah. 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 Now, what do you use for food store? Is this all your food storage here? Um, I keep things that are easily accessible. We just got back from a trip, so I don't have a whole I'm not really plugged into this right now, but, uh. um, yeah, just for, like, easy use, I keep things in these jars, and then we have, like, five-gallon buckets, um, with bulk quantities okay. of things out here. And then do you have other food storage, or is this it? This is, yeah, this is it. Oh, wow. Yeah. How often do you go to the grocery store? Uh, once a week. Okay, that's yeah. not bad. 
Yeah. yeah. And then um, I really love how you guys used all the space. So can you explain what you used all of your space above your bathroom here? Uh, well, it's mostly just um, long-term, like storage, winter clothes. I have some baby stuff up there that I don't, you know, stuff we don't access very often. Okay. Um, so we try not to have too much up there because if it's up there, you forget about it mm -hmm. and just kind of keep it labeled and more easily accessible. So do you have, you were talking about, you know, things you don't use too much. Do you have like a lot of pots and pans or a lot of, it doesn't seem like you have, you have your KitchenAid and your Vitamix, but like, is that all your cooking utensils? Uh, yeah, I have another drawer here. Do you? <laughs> this just has, okay, but that's yeah. still not really a lot for I don't, someone. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I have the essentials. And you pretty much, do you keep things you don't use or do you just only keep the things I you use? I usually just keep things I use. Okay. Yeah. So if you find you're not using something, you yeah, just get rid of it. Yeah, I would give it to the Goodwill or ask a friend yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Did you make your rug? No. <laughs> Gleaning? Oh, oh, yes. Out I thought of that. Okay. <laughs> That was a good one. As we were seeing the apples, I thought, I bet they're gleaning the apples. So what are some ways that you save on food? Because I know as we were driving in, we saw, <laughs> Ellie was like, Mom, does everybody have apple orchards in their backyard? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. But do you do a lot of things like gleaning or picking berries, that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I, I'm all about just making use of what's around. And um, a lot of places won't let you just come and glean. You have to ask. But I've gotten involved with a gleaning network that like has official rights to go into mm -hmm. farms and stuff. So when opportunities arise with that, I usually go, I try to go. And so last summer I was able to can lots of quarts of tomatoes and uh, applesauce, apple butter, jam, all kinds of things like that, corn. So I got a lot, most of my canning came from the gleaning, so I didn't actually spend money on any of that that I was able to put out, which was really great. Oh, that's good. Because yeah. that's one of the things that we kind of preach is that it doesn't always save the can. Yeah. If you're going and buying your apples, you're buying your sugar, you're yep. buying your pectin, whatever, you know, um, buying your cans, or I mean yeah. your jars and your lids and a big canner, mm -hmm. you're not really saving a lot of money a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. I also like to can dry beans. And oh, yeah. And then it's like, it's an easy meal. I know you can buy beans in a can. And really not that much, but it's less waste, and then, mm -hmm. you you know, they're healthier. You can add whatever mm -hmm. seasonings you want, and they don't have the preservatives and everything. Yeah. So. so explain to our viewers what gleaning is, because I know yeah. what it is, but a lot of people may not know what that is. So explain what gleaning, okay. gleaning is. Okay, so gleaning is just when a farmer has already sold what they're going to sell for the year, for, um, and then they will just let the public or whoever, they let people come in and pick the leftover. And so we, a lot of people, when they hear that, they think of it's you know, just going to be a little bit and maybe not really good quality. But it's usually so abundant that we couldn't even get, like, some of these tomato fields we went in last year were so full of really nice, juicy red tomatoes that were perfectly perfect. And just, we could have been there all day and had more than we could have used. Oh, no. So, and anyways, what we do is we give a lot of that away and then we're able to use some too. So, yeah. It's, it's and I'll tell you a funny story in Colorado. Uh, a farm opened up their fields for gleaning and they put it in the newspaper and they had 40,000 people show up. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. They never did that again. Yeah. They said right. it was a nightmare. So <laughs> I was really excited when I heard you guys were doing that because, um, we just don't do it in, in our yeah. part of the country. So, some so. states, like if you go online and you type in gleaning, um, a lot of states have something set up and you can find uh, there's a, a website that um, our state has um, but it goes state by state so each state would probably be a little bit different but I think most states especially if you live in an agricultural state would have something like that yeah and we'll find one and we'll put a link in the description below for you I don't know where it is because I looked it up for Colorado and there wasn't hardly anything yeah. so I just didn't pay attention but I'll find and put a link mm -hmm. in the description below yeah so now we're in your laundry room and Bracken said this was an add-on yes to the shed right and it's its own laundry room. I love just an old, its own laundry room. I hate yeah. laundry rooms that are in closets. <laughs> you know, in the hallway, you yeah. have clothes piled all over. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. so is this where you keep all your canned goods when yeah. you can? Yeah, uh-huh. Exactly. Okay. And in the winter, is this heated? 
Uh, just from the wood stove, whatever comes okay. in. Yeah. Okay. And then over here you have a folding table. Uh, somewhat, yeah. We This is Some days. work in progress. <laughs> this used to be a solar thing, which isn't happening, but yeah. Okay. I keep... I just like to keep stuff off the floor. So. Okay. And then your washer and dryer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're going to have Bracken step in and talk about your water heater. So this is an on-demand water heater, and these things are cool. <laughs> yeah, so it only heats water when we need it. Um, instead of running gas or electricity to keep 50 gallons of water hot at all times, this just literally clicks on, and as soon as we turn off, it shuts itself off. So, uh, And this came from a lot of, like, if you go to... Lowe's or Home Depot, you're going to find pretty pricey, like, high-end residential water heaters. We got this from an RV supply company for, like, 250 bucks, um, and it works great. We've been we've been using it for almost three years without any problems. Do you guys take showers every day? Uh, do you really want an answer to that? <laughs> no, I don't take a shower every day, so I'm one of those people You're that, asking Bracken. Uh, ask me, you know. <laughs> that's funny. Because that's actually something that we promote is people think you have to take a 20 to 30 minute shower every single day. Right. And you really don't have to. Yeah. And in some parts of the country, like my brother had eczema when he was a baby. Right. The doctor told mom, don't give him a bath. Mm -hmm. Just spot wash him because... It's drying out his skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's you know that's pretty good um, that you guys admit that. <laughs> people look at us like we have four heads. Well, we yeah. Have... I mean, we we keep up cleanliness, but you know, yeah. it's like I don't have greasy hair, and so I don't have to wash my hair. But every four days, usually. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we told Ellie on the way up here. I'm like, I really should wash my hair. She said, Oh, it looks fine, Mom. Okay. <laughs> it's been like three days, and we've been in the woods. And, yeah. <laughs> Kind of One more thing about our food storage, these um, plastic buckets are food grade and they come from Walmart Bakery. If you just go up to the bakery and ask them if they have any empty buckets, they sold these to us for a dollar each. So it's so is it the stuff the frosting comes in from? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're yeah. easy to open. Yeah, and just nice. go ask the bakery or the deli or even restaurants sometimes have mm -hmm. to, they have nowhere to get rid of them. And yeah. so just keep asking. If one tells you no, just keep trying. So mm -hmm. that's where we've gotten ours before. And by the way, here's another another tip. I used mine for container gardens. When we didn't have a yard, I got these kinds of buckets and I put my tomatoes and everything. I even did cucumbers in here and drilled holes in the bottom, filled it with soil and made this a container garden. So also one way, another way we save money is by making our own laundry detergent and it's very inexpensive made with borax and washing soda and a bar of soap, it lasts a long time and gets the clothes really clean. What kind of soap do you use? I like bar soap. Mm -hmm. I use whatever I can get cheap. <laughs> I, I was using Phil's naphtha, but yeah. my son had an allergic reaction to it. Uh -huh. And then I was using Zote and he had a reaction to that. Yeah. So now I use 100% coconut oil made, homemade yeah, that because works I'm good. making soap. And yeah. I'm not saying you have to make your own soap, people. Yeah. I'm just saying. There's like, uh, we do. I get the Kirk's Castile a lot of times because mm -hmm. that's, it has coconut like coconut oil base and it's unscented mm -hmm. um yeah. we don't have the skin problems but you can find inexpensive soaps that are unscented or you know yeah so. yeah pretty good okay so now we're in your tiny house bathroom and this really isn't that tiny yeah it's, it's not a pretty big bathroom <laughs> yeah yeah i mean okay so this is a full-size tub uh i think so it, it's it's uh it smaller is. okay it is, <laughs> it is. it's a full-size tub yeah. and then you have a full shower yeah. And a full sink. Uh-huh. And then a full toilet. And yeah. then all your storage over the toilet. Mm -hmm. And do you have any other storage for the bathroom or is this it? Just under the sink. Under the sink yeah. and then over the toilet. But you don't yeah. really need that much no. for the bathroom. We don't use a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. and then you have all the kids' toys. Yeah, everybody's yeah. got the kids' toys. We do right. that too. <laughs> We're almost toys. out of the kids' toys. Yeah. Like, oh man, we're not gonna have kids' toys for the first time in nineteen years. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. So Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm really impressed. I thought your shower would be, like, you know, a little well, too tiny. Well, with having little ones, it helps to have a bath. It does. A bathtub. Yeah, it yeah. really does. Thank you guys for letting us look in every nook and cranny of your house. Sure, no yeah. Problem. I am just so impressed that you took a shed mm -hmm. and made it into a really nice tiny house, and you did it totally debt-free. That's right. And I want you guys to know that they are an encouragement to people to show that this really can be done. If you think so, think outside the box and try to find a way around your problem or your situation and figure out a way to get out of it. They were in debt. They wanted to be debt free. 
They wanted to live in a house that kept them debt free and they have a very nice house out in the forest, which most people would die for, mm -hmm. you know, most people would just love to live out here. So, so one thing I forgot to ask you was, how do you guys make your living out here? It seems like you're out in the middle of nowhere, although you're fairly close to town. Sure. But how do you earn your living as you're living in your tiny house? Okay, so the first thing that we did was, as, as you preach on your channel, we reduced our expenses to where we need as little money as possible. Our, our, our housing is paid for by work trade. And then any additional funds that we need for gas, food, and things like that. Um, I do handyman work on okay. the side, and uh, we run our YouTube channel and uh, and have music available. So. So you sell your DVD, or your, not your DVDs? You sell your CDs. Mm -hmm. You have your YouTube income, and then you're um, also just do handyman work as people need it. Right. Yep. Okay. And that's yeah. pretty much it. Well, that's it. And yeah. so then you're able to have a nice lifestyle without having a huge income right. coming in. Yeah. So. Yeah. We live on um, realistically less than a thousand dollars a month. Wow. Yeah. That's so. great mm -hmm. for six people. Yes. Almost seven. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> good job. Thanks. See, it can be done. It can, it be, really done. can be done. Yeah. yeah. Go visit them at Sounds Like Rain on YouTube. I've got the description below. And please visit us at livingonadime.com and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.